guys, it's Christy with Stone Family Farmstead. Today I want to show you all of the items that you're going to need to get started with making fruit wines. This is part one of a series on winemaking that I'm doing. Basically, the first video is going to be all the things that you need to collect so that you can do this project. And uh, the next video will be how to uh, put together your wine brew. And then the following video after that will uh, most likely be bottling. So um, if you're interested in that, go ahead and give this a watch. Grab all your stuff and probably next week or so, um, unless you know, you're not watching in real time, um, I should have part two up and then the following probably 30 days or something, it'll be part three. That's pretty much how this series is gonna go, so stay tuned. Next week, I'll have another video that will actually go through the recipe, but if you watch this video and you start shopping and getting all the stuff you need now, um, then by the time the video comes out next week, then you'll have everything that you need, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm gonna go through all of the equipment that you need to get started making fruit wines, and then I'll go through a few of the ingredients that are pretty much the same from recipe to recipe. That way you can collect all of that stuff, and then all you'll be left with is collecting the actual ingredients for the specific wine that you want to make. The first three things that you're gonna need are a stock pot, a long-handled spoon, and measuring cups and spoons which you probably already have in your kitchen. And if you don't, you know, you can just get whatever. Just make sure your stock pot is uh, at least eight quarts because that will enable you to make your uh, gallon of wine each time. The next item that you're gonna need is a two gallon fermentation uh, bucket. And you can get these from Oops, Homebrew Ohio. I got mine, I believe, probably on Amazon. But if not, you can go to this website. I don't get anything for recommending them. It's just where, probably where I got mine. Um, what makes this different than a, just a regular two gallon bucket that you can buy like, you know, at prepper stores or at stores that sell prepper stuff um, is that this one has um, a hole in the top with a gasket and it is, that hole is so that you can put in, hold on, um, an airlock, okay? And this is for the first round of brewing, you know, when the fruit is still in it. And so we'll talk more about that in the next video when we make the fruit wine. But for now, um, that's all you need to know about that. The next thing that you need is an airlock. Um, this airlock that I have, it has three parts. There are some that have just one part and they kind of look like a figure eight, but either one would be fine. But what an airlock does is it allows uh, the mixture to dispel gas while not allowing any oxygen into the mixture. And that's gonna be important. The next thing that you'll need is a hydrometer. They usually will come in a box like this and Basically, you need to get one that will uh, be for wine and not hard alcohol. In California, we're not supposed to make hard alcohol, but I did make the mistake of getting the wrong hydrometer. So um, if anybody is making moonshine, let me know and I'll send you my hydrometer. But um, anyway, this one here is for like wine and beer and meat and things like that. And so um, basically the way you use it is you fill up a container like this that has measurements on the outside and then you put the hydrometer in and it kind of bounces around like this and it will show you uh, by the readings uh, how much alcohol is actually in the mixture at any given point of the brewing. So um, these hydrometers are glass. This is probably my third one uh, because I have granite counters and I break mine. So just know that you want to be careful around granite counters because they're, they break really, really easily. And usually the hydrometers will come with a, um, a measuring container like this or a glass one or whatever. And if not, 
usually, especially if you're shopping on Amazon, if you go down below, um, you'll be able to see other things that are recommended. I will also link to everything that I'm talking about in the show notes, and so that way you will be able to go directly to the items that I'm showing you or items that I've used before for winemaking and um, decide if you want to get those or you can you know, continue to shop on your own. The next thing that you're going to need is a mesh bag. This is what you're going to put the fruit into. It doesn't have a zipper or anything. It could just be just a regular old mesh bag. Um, you put your fruit into this and this is part of the first brew that happens inside of the bucket. Okay. So you're going to want to have that for sure. Um, I don't know if there are any that you can use um, that aren't specifically made for winemaking, but I don't think that they're very expensive. Pretty much most everything that, um, that you would buy is not super expensive. Maybe the bucket might be a little expensive, but other than that, everything else is pretty, um, pretty inexpensive, but you know, um, it is an investment at first, so um, just know that. The next thing that you'll need is a one quart canning jar. And um, I'm pretty sure that most of you probably already have that. If not, um, you could get one at Walmart or whatever, you know, it's just a 32 ounce jar. The next thing that you're going to need is a fine mesh strainer and some cheesecloth to go inside. I use a muslin cheesecloth that can be washed in the laundry and then used over and over again, but you can use regular cheesecloth. Um, this mesh strainer isn't super fine, but you can get uh, more fine ones than this, but I like this one a lot because it's like bigger than my head. And, um, and you can do a lot of things with it. I use it for lots of different stuff. So if you get one like that, you might wanna uh, think about what else you might use that for. The next thing that you'll need is a flour sack towel or cheesecloth, like I mentioned before. So either one of those things will work. Next, you'll need a funnel, maybe a deeper one than this though. Next, you'll need a one gallon jug. You can get these on Amazon. I think they're about 10 bucks and they usually will come with a, a plug and an airlock or maybe just a plug that fits uh, the mouth of the jug. This one I got from Sprout. So if you have a Sprouts near your house, you can just buy their apple juice and keep these jugs, you know, for uh, home brewing. A bonus is, is that for about the same price, you're gonna get all the juice that's inside of here. And you know what? You can make actually a hard cider with the apple juice that's inside. And maybe one of these days I'll make that video too. The other thing about um, using a jug from uh, Sprouts, um, you're going to need to shop for a plug that fits into the Sprouts bottle. Usually if you buy from Amazon, they're going to either be able to recommend one that will fit into the mouth of the jug that you buy, or it'll come with it. So um, this is actually called a stopper or you might see it listed as a bung, but I like to call it a stopper for obvious reasons. <laughs> so um, anyway, it has a hole in it. And um, the hole is to put your airlock into, okay? And so I like to have a few airlocks. They're usually like three for six bucks or two for six bucks or something like that. I like to have a couple of them just so that I can um, have various brews in various stages. And so um, that's just a little thing I thought I would share. So that's the jug. And it's a one gallon jug. The next thing that you're gonna need is a racking cane with a tip and a, um, a measure of siphon hose. Here's what the racking cane looks like. Basically what it does is after your wine has brewed for a certain amount of time you're going to want to remove the sediment from the bottom of the wine so you may choose to move your wine to a different jug for um, longer brewing or you may choose to bottle it and we'll talk about bottling items in a bit but for now you're going to um, want to have a racking cane that has a tip 
that will actually pull the uh, the wine in all the way up here because at the bottom of the jug after you have uh, brewed for 30 days or whatever there's going to be a, a lot of sediment at the bottom and you don't want to transfer that sediment into another the next brewing vessel um, so a racking cane basically i know you can't see the top but basically mm -hmm. you're sucking it, it into uh, the racking cane itself and the siphon tube and this siphon tube will either go into a second jug Not the same one. I know I'm putting it in the same one But it would be into a second jug while you're siphoning over here pretend there's a jug or into the vessels that you're going to be storing it in your final Final vessels like your wine bottles or your beer bottles or something like that, which we'll talk about in a bit too the next thing that you uh, want to figure out is how will you bottle your wine. You can bottle it in wine bottles. We like to buy these ones that have twist off um, caps, you know, where we drink the wine. It's usually cheap wine. We drink the wine and then we can save this, wash and save the bottles so that we can use them. That way we don't have to purchase corks or um, any other equipment to to cork them they just have the lids so if you already drink wine you know you might try to find some uh, and if you don't mind cheap wine you might try to find some with twist off lids we have saved ours over time and reused them and um, while I don't drink right now um, we have drank a lot of cheap wine and so um, you know it suited us really well so if you drink cheap wine too then you'll be fine uh, with these kind. If you want to, um, and you guys drink beer, you can uh, wash those beer bottles out and you can use a bottle capper like this to, um, to recap the beer bottle after they are filled with your wine. So, basically, these are the unused bottle caps. So the way this works is that you get your cap, you can put it on the magnet uh, on the underside of the bottle capper, place the, the lid on top of the bottle, and then use this item to seal it. So it usually won't fall out, but it'll usually just um, tighten onto the bottle and then you'll have your wine bottled in beer bottles. So um, you can do that. The other thing you can do is you can invest in some swing top bottles which are really really cool and they're good for you know wine, beer, um, you can use them for kombucha, you can use them for uh, pretty much anything that you're going to brew. and. Um, while they're kind of an investment, you can just reuse them over and over and over, and they're really cool looking. So there's that as well. Um, let's move on to the ingredients that are pretty much mainstays for winemaking. So the first thing that you'll need when brewing fruit wines is yeast. I buy uh, this brand, Red Star, and there are a lot of different kinds of yeast um, some are better for specific types of wine and, you know, I just use this one kind of yeast. It's um, Montrachet, I believe, is what this is called. But there are a whole bunch of other kinds. Um, I've used this in uh, apple wine or hard cider is another name for it. I've used it in fruit wines. Um, it works just fine, but, you know, that's I have a really unsophisticated palate so um, you know I, I can't taste any difference or anything so um, what I would suggest about yeast though is that if you find a recipe that you want to use stick with the yeast that it calls for um, usually you can get you know a pack of 10 or whatever for uh, I don't know a few dollars on Amazon and so again you know you're gonna want to uh, try different things and see what you like best. Basically what the yeast does is it makes the mixture able to ferment. 
The next ingredient you're going to need is acid blend. And um, all these things that I'm going to show you, I've gotten from Amazon.com. They're not very expensive, but obviously all these, this equipment and these ingredients are going to be an investment um, at first for you to try this project. Um, the good news is, is that you won't have to buy a whole bunch of other stuff when you get ready to do your next gallon of wine because you'll have already bought it and you'll have plenty left over. So your acid blend is what gives your wine a, a crispness. And so um, if you have a, like a high acid fruit, maybe you would use a little bit less of this. If you have a, a lower acid fruit, super sweet or whatever, maybe you'd wanna use a little bit more. So basically what you would do is just add this to taste. And so start with um, the smaller amount, like if in your recipe it says one quarter to one half teaspoon or whatever, you know, start with the smaller amount. You can taste it and see if you like that. And if you don't, you can add more. The other time you would use this is if like later on your wine tastes flat, you can add a little bit to it to change that flavor. The next thing I'm going to share with you are Campton tabs. Campton, C-A-M-P-D-E-N tabs. And basically what these do is they stop the brewing process, plus they also disinfect your, uh, your wine. So like say you pick your fruit outside, it's not like completely bacteria free. So using the Campton tabs is going to help you to keep your, um, your wine mixture disinfected so that you don't end up getting any growths or it doesn't end up going bad or whatever. Most of the time you would use these for uncooked things like fresh fruit or something like that. Otherwise, um, you may not need to use it, but just follow what the recipe says. You would use one in the beginning, like when you first put your fruit into your bucket and then you would do it again toward the tail end before you bottle, okay, to stop the brewing process. The next item that you'll probably use frequently is pectic enzyme. And what this does is when you're using a high pectin fruit, sometimes it'll make your mixture cloudy or your wine cloudy, and the pectic enzyme will uh, clear that up for you. Next are tannins. So this is a, a dark brown powder and you use very little of it. And what it does is it makes your wine dry if you like that. Most winemakers want to use tannins because it changes the flavor, it makes it better, and it makes it like a more balanced wine. But if you're allergic to tannins, then uh, you know you might wanna either cut back or you know just test it with less and less or none. The last ingredient is going to be yeast nutrient. It looks kind of like sugar, but maybe a more coarse, coarse sugar. And basically what this does is it feeds the yeast so that it can keep on doing its work. One last thing that I want to share with you that um, isn't an ingredient, but it's actually uh, should be part of your equipment is uh, star sand. Star sand is a sanitizer and um, it's gonna feel a little bit complicated at first, but you need to have everything sanitized before you start your winemaking. And um, Star Sand is a really good product for that, but if you don't wanna use um, you know, chemicals or whatever to sanitize your supplies, you can probably do some research. Or uh, you know, if you don't know and you can't find it, ask me and I'll see what I can find out. But I've always just used Star Sand, and it's really um, been a good product for me. A container like this is about four ounces, probably cost about eight or ten bucks, and you only use a, a really small amount, like every time you do some brewing. So to me, it's worth it, but you know, your mileage may vary. So basically, that's pretty much all that uh, I have for you today. So go ahead and check out the show notes for all the links to the items that I showed you. I'll try to link as close to or the actual item that I bought so that you can uh, be sure to be able to uh, do the project without any confusion. 
And um, in the meantime, you can head over to stonefamilyfarmstead.com and do a search in the search bar, which is uh, underneath my, my photo on the right, and search for fig wine or strawberry wine just to get kind of a feel for how I do my wines. And um, there's one other thing that I want to show you, and it's this book. And this is where I get my fruit wine recipe from. Uh, this book is called True Brews. How to Craft Fermented Cider, Beer, Sake, Soda, Mead, Kefir, and Kombucha. So if you're a brew freak, this is an awesome book. So um, that's the end of it for me, and I'll see you later.